1968, Vietnam. Smoke fills the air as shots ring out in the distance. Young Bill is looking forward to some R&R &R in Thailand. After 10 months of fighting, he's seen enough death. He's already lost some good friends. He's in charge of a squad when he gets a call on the radio. A helicopter has just been shot down. Can he and his men look for survivors and ensure any valuable equipment is destroyed? Close to where the helicopter lies, they come under heavy fire. They're pinned down as bullets kick up mud from the ground. Suddenly, jet planes fly overhead. The sound is deafening. Bill realizes an airstrike has been called. For a moment, he feels relief, and then it happens. Shrapnel from one of the bombs rips through his face, taking off part of his cheek and tearing out an eye. Then the thought comes to him, I'm only 19 and I'm going to die. What happens next is nothing short of mind-bending. Let's just say that Bill had the trip of his life, even getting to see his dead grandpa. We'll tell you about this insane experience a bit later, but first we should explain a few things. Bill is not some guy we just made up. He was severely injured that day. He still bears the wounds today. He now wears an artificial eye and speaks in the tone of a toad. He wrote a book about his life-changing experience discussing what happened that day in great detail. As we said, we'll come back to it later. Many, many people have had what are called near-death experiences, which from now on we'll call NDEs. It's lucky for us that many scientists have studied them and written about them, and the people that have experienced them have written down and published what happened to them. While some of you might be thinking, hmm, I'm skeptical, you should know that most people in the medical community don't doubt that people really do experience them. There's still a bit of a mystery in that why people from all over the world tend to have similar ones. From India to Indiana, from a Buddhist to a Mormon, from ancient times to the present, NDEs almost always share a similar narrative. No one dies and just dreams of going to the toilet or making a cheese sandwich. They often involve walking through a door toward a bright light. They often consist of meeting a godlike figure, traversing solar systems, talking to dead relatives, and almost to a T, the people feel really, really, really great. The words bliss, beauty, and ecstasy are often invoked when people describe them. And as you'll see today, people who have had an NDE feel reinvigorated after the experience experience. They feel their lives have a purpose. They feel they're now understanding the meaning of life. One of the reasons we know so much about them is because of the hard work done by the Near Death Experience Research Foundation. It's been researching NDEs and letting people publish their NDE stories on its website since 1998. The last entries on the website were uploaded just before making this video. As an example, the last one, written in mid-September, by Constanza from Argentina says, I was aware of everything that had happened. As I fell from that dark tunnel with a light at the end, a light that was cold and warm, at the same time, that gave peace. I was thinking about my mom, and it all happened too fast. I guess not in real time. I felt my soul fall into my body, and I didn't open my eyes. I felt peace and despair. She'd been hit by a car just after walking out of her school gates. After that, her buddies liked to call her the girl who flew. To get a story published on the site, you have to fill in a questionnaire and provide as many details as possible, including medical records if you had your NDE in a hospital. Moreover, the foundation looks at all the NDEs and then chooses to investigate many of them in detail. As we said, scientists and doctors don't deny NDEs exist. Many of them just say they're a result of something physiological, like the brain having a last few zaps as the person clocks out. But those people will still admit that NDEs are mightily strange, given that they are so often so similar in nature. Also, some people have actually had their brains scanned as they died, and it seems there really was no activity when, in their heads, they were what's the expression? Trippin' balls. One medical expert that has studied NDEs is a psychiatrist named Bruce Grayson. He spent decades doing research, interviewing people, talking to neuroscientists, and publishing books and papers. Not many people know NDEs like Bruce does. Importantly, Bruce is not a believer in God. His research is from a scientific point of view. He's a realist, a materialist, a man who wants empirical evidence. This is why NDEs fascinate him so much. They make little sense when it comes to science. They can't be explained rationally. Not in any absolute way, anyway. He did say this, though, which might make some of you feel a bit better about your life. I grew up without any kind of spiritual background, and I'm still not sure I understand what spiritual means. I'm convinced now, after doing this for 40, 50 years, that there is more to life than just our physical bodies. One reason he started his research is that he was working in a hospital when a patient he had been trying to revive in the emergency room temporarily died. Notably, he had spilled spaghetti sauce on his tie at the time. The patient survived, and the next day he went to the intensive care unit to talk with her. She recognized him from the night before. He said, I'm surprised you remember me because I thought you were unconscious. She replied, not my room, I saw you talking to Susan down the hall. The hall, where indeed he talked with Susan, was quite far from the ER. How was this possible? She then told him he was hard to miss since he had that great big stain on his tie. Okay, wow. 
he thought. Later in life, he looked at the research of a woman named Jan Holden at the University of North Texas. She'd studied about 100 cases of NDEs that could be corroborated by other people, in that what the person saw was later confirmed by others. She wrote that 92% of what the person said had actually happened. We should say here that there haven't been many rigorous studies on this because you'd have to film people dying and then hope that person had an NDE. You'd need permission. It's not exactly easy to do that, so it's really hard to study them seriously. Still, when Bruce had already been a doctor for 30 years, he spoke with a truck driver named Al who'd had an NDE during a quadruple bypass surgery. Al told Bruce he came out of his body and saw himself on the operating table. At his side was a surgeon. Al said the surgeon was flapping his arms like he was trying to fly. Okay, said Bruce, and then he decided to go and see the surgeon who performed the surgery. He said this surgeon was a serious man with an excellent reputation, so he felt a bit stupid talking about NDEs and arm flapping. This is the answer he got. Well, yes, I did do that. I developed the habit of letting my assistant start the procedure while I put on my sterile gown and gloves, and then I walk into the operating room and watch them for a while. And I don't want to risk touching anything not in the sterile field, so I place my palms flat against my chest where they won't touch anything, and then I point out things to my assistants using my elbows so I won't accidentally touch something with my fingers. The surgeon then showed Bruce what it would look like, and it looked the same as when Al had done it in front of him. Just so you have some more input from professionals, this is what another scientist wrote in a paper that was published in the U.S. National Library of Medicine. Considering NDEs from both a medical perspective and logically, it should not be possible for unconscious people to often report highly lucid experiences that are clear and logically structured. Most NDEers report supernormal consciousness at the time of their NDEs. Okay, we think you heard enough about the theory. You know they happen. They're real, or at least people think they're real. Now you need to hear about some of them. The first experience we'll talk about is sure to get you skeptics out there shouting at your screen. That's because the NDE in question was had by a baby that was no older than three months. The baby had pneumonia. It died, and it came back to life. Then, when she was about four years old, she told her mother that she had a memory of being in a room and watching a baby die. She knew the baby was her. She told her mom that the room the baby was in had wallpaper with ships on it. The curtains were an olive green color. Out of the window, she could see two large houses. She said the room she was in was the dining room. She was floating around the room as another entity, not the baby. She actually felt sorry for the baby. The woman wrote, I described the room to a T, including the vaporizer that I can still describe. It had a rickrack pattern around it, like Charlie Brown's shirt. My mother asked me several times who told you this, because we had moved from that house when I was still very young. We understand if you say this woman is lying, because really, how do we prove she isn't? By the way, what she had was called an out-of-body experience, which is only one type of NDE. Some folks don't see themselves dying, they just kind of go off to a light-spangled la-la land. Or as the dearly departed neurologist Oliver Sacks once said, they're having extremely complex hallucinations. That doesn't explain everything, though. That woman's story is one of the many that are similar. In fact, people have been having NDEs since humans started writing down stories. The ancient Greek philosopher Plato wrote that his teacher Socrates told him about one he'd had. The Roman natural philosopher Pliny the Elder wrote that when he kicked the bucket for a few seconds, he felt blissful and went off to some place where he met his dead brother. Even stranger is the fact that he didn't know his brother was dead. NDEs have been recorded for centuries. It doesn't matter what country they happened in or what religion the person belonged to, they all sound very similar. Bright lights, heavenly figures, speaking dead folks, other worlds floating in the air, etc. etc. Not everyone meets gods, though as a guy from Canada named Aaron described something completely different. On his mad journey into different worlds, he came across what he said looked like a cross between a buffalo and an orangutan. The guy named Rick, who said he used to work at the Georgia Department of Corrections, fell 80 feet while he was hunting. He then blacked out and found himself somewhere else. He wrote, I was traveling at a high rate of speed upwards through the atmosphere. As I left the atmosphere, I looked back and I could see the Earth. Such a beautiful sight. It was so brilliantly lit. As I looked ahead, I could see the planets. I thought to myself, this couldn't be. This is pretty normal for an NDE. People go down black holes, they kick planets like their soccer balls, they attain endless knowledge and feel universal love. Some watch a screen where their whole life story unfolds. But what we like about Rick's story is that he went to Crystal City and met a man with no pupils in his eyes. Rick then knocked on the door and someone shouted in a booming voice, Enter! The room became incredibly bright when Rick walked in there. Then that same voice asked, What have you done with your life? Rather than say, Ah, eh, get pee-pee thrown at me by angry men behind bars, he kept quiet. Then he 
saw his mother give birth to him. He saw many things. He wrote, I turned and saw the earth in turmoil, wars and death, terrible sights, cities fell and new ones were built. I saw the United States and a volcano exploding, covering many cities in darkness. I looked on and saw the collapse of our government as we know it, people killing for food and water, horrible sights. He was told to go back and help fix things. When he woke up, he was paralyzed. He was picked up and later had many surgeries on his back. He wrote, days turned into weeks, weeks into months, then one morning I felt a tingling in my feet. He says these days, he does as he was told and tries to live his life helping others not as fortunate as him. This is actually pretty common. There are accounts of soldiers and cops having NDEs and then going on to a totally different profession, mostly care services and working for charities. We don't mean to say being a cop or a soldier is necessarily bad, but these jobs often require you hurting or even killing people. This next story is downright crazy. It happened to Valerie in 1968. It's strange, to say the least, and it includes what's called an ADC, after-death communication. So, Valerie was in the US, about to watch stock car races with her buddies. She was still only in her late teens. She went to get her jacket from her bedroom when suddenly she was in a forest close to a bunch of American soldiers. She knew right away she was in Vietnam. We warned you this was weird. Make of it what you will. She wrote, Then I realized that a very close friend of mine was the soldier in the lead. He was the only soldier there that I knew. I excused myself from the companionship of the two soldiers walking with me and started to walk to the front of the line to talk to my friend. As she was about to get to him, another soldier grabbed hold of her. She heard a clicking sound and then, boom! The force sent her flying backward into a tree. Her face and body were covered in blood, and that blood belonged to her good friend. He'd just been blown apart by a landmine. We'll let her tell you what happened next because it's just so unbelievable. The next instant found me again in the doorway of my apartment. I heard the sound of feet running as my friend and the two boys waiting for me came to see what had happened. They found me standing in the doorway with my hands braced against the door jamb on each side. I had blood and dirt splattered on my clothes and face, and my right shoulder was painfully swollen and turning black. It had been dislocated when I hit the tree. She didn't bother with the stock car races that day, still feeling the pain of hitting the tree during her ADC experience. Then two weeks later she was told that the guy's family had received a letter. He'd been blown up by a landmine while walking through a forest in Vietnam. Valerie said it happened the exact same time and date when she had her ADC. Again, more rational people would just think she made it up, or maybe she'd been fond of the odd LSD trip in 1968, but as we said earlier, there are just too many NDEs out there to discount the phenomenon completely. Still. Hers is way out there. Then you've got Rudy's story. In 1975, he was working as a plumber in Holland. He fell 10 feet from a ladder, and as luck would have it, he landed on what's called a cauldron of tar. If his day could get any worse, he said, a wave of hot tar spilled out over me. Lying there on the street, I was conscious and felt no pain, but very warm. I cannot remember the ride to the hospital. At the hospital, the doctors started working on me right away. Because they thought I was in tremendous pain, they gave me a shot of morphine. He said he had an out-of-body experience. He saw the nurses struggling to take off his t-shirt and put bandages on him. Then a doctor walked in and screamed at them. He told them this is not what you do when someone's covered in tar. They were pulling off his skin. Rudy said the doctor was absolutely furious. The nurses should have known better. He said they kept him in a glass-cased room for about a week and he was so full of morphine that he was pretty much comatose. Rudy wrote, The funny part is, I can remember everything that happened at the intensive care. I know my parents came to visit, that my father had thrown up when he saw me, that my mother did not know what to do and could not stop crying. All this time, he said he knew which nurses were treating him and saw exactly what medication they were giving him. He might have had his eyes closed, but he somehow knew. He also heard the nurses talking together. He wrote, When I told the nurse what she was studying for and how far she'd progressed, she was incredulous. Afterward, I never saw her again. She avoided me as if I was some sort of pariah. Another nurse I told of the medication patients were getting, and she also reacted very strangely. After this, I did not mention it again. He also learned that the doctor had indeed shouted at them. It's funny because for a man who was covered in hot tar, which was torture in the past, when he asked how he felt, he answered, wonderful. He said during that week, he was often standing next to the nurses and could see himself unconscious in bed. He was never a religious man, but the happiness he felt in death changed him. He now thinks we have a special connection with the universe. He wrote, I now believe a person does not lead one life but a few, maybe even several. This brings us back to Bill, the guy we introduced at the start of the show. It's not easy to kill Bill, that's for sure. So as you know, he was looking forward to his break in Thailand when some shrapnel hit him in the face during an airstrike. He later said all he wanted right then was someone to comfort him. He wanted his mom. Then it all went black. He accepted this was the end. He then found himself not feeling any pain at all. He was walking through a dark tunnel toward a light, later writing that it was the most incredibly beautiful, peaceful, calm, loving place I'd ever been in my life. 
He saw a being of light walking toward him, and when that being got closer, he realized it was his dead grandfather. He told Bill to relax, that this was okay, it was natural. So Bill carried on walking toward another place. He wrote, It was almost this pristine meadow and water, and I wanted to move there. I had this feeling that I needed to move toward that. But as I did, another being approached me, one that was obviously someone that was in charge, someone in authority. And that person said I couldn't go on, that I had to return, go back where I'd come from. And he told me that I had a higher purpose to fulfill. Sound familiar? Of course, because so many people are told they have a higher purpose during their NDEs. We're talking about a large percentage of people worldwide who have been having NDEs for millennia. Why on earth does this happen so often? Why do they not visit a place where there are, say, 50 clowns flying around on Harleys made out of strawberry milkshakes? Why aren't there mountains of weed and chocolate? Why is the experience always quite serious and profound? If NDEs are dreams or hallucinations, surely not everyone would go on the profound trip. Surely some folks would want to party it up before they pass on, but no, they don't. Not ever. Bill heeded what he was told and walked back to the door. He was bathed in light all the way and felt unconditional love. He felt peace and serenity. He loved mankind. He wrote, So I woke up. I was back on the battlefield. I was conscious again. I was still bleeding, but now there was no pain. There was no concern, no worry. My right eye had fallen out, and my face was very badly wounded, and I was wounded down the right side. His men couldn't go over to him since the enemy was still shooting. Then one of his guys crawled over to him. He'd been shot, and the bullet exited out his back. Bill knew then that there was this guy that was about to go where he'd just been. He wrote, I took him in my arms, and I held him, and I looked in his eyes, and he died. He passed on right there in my arms. Things got even crazier. Bill reckons this guy's spirit came out of him and then communicated telepathically. He later wrote, As I started to get back off the ground, the man that had just shot my friend, my comrade, came out of the bushes and shot me five times through the arm, chest, through the neck. I saw the bullets coming out of the gun in slow motion. I could feel them enter my body. I saw the blood. I saw the tissue tear. And yet, I was not concerned. There was no fear. He was still able to get a hold of his weapon and shoot the guy who just shot him. He isn't sure if he hit him or just scared him. The guy ran off anyway. Bill then managed to walk. He got all the way to a medic and collapsed. He could hear the medic shouting, but he felt a great internal peace. He wasn't in any pain at all. When he came to, he couldn't speak. One of the bullets had ripped through his neck and damaged his vocal cords. He then passed out again, but heard the words, this man probably is not savable, and we have many others that we have to treat. He doesn't know what happened after that, but he knows they eventually got him on a hospital ship waiting in Da Nang Harbor. When someone started working on him, he was conscious again and asked if he wanted any pain relief. He said no, he was fine, everything was just fine. The medic told him, you shouldn't be here, you should be dead. Look at you, you're a mess, and you're sitting on my table. Bill spent the next few months in hospitals in Vietnam and later Japan. He could only communicate with a pencil and a notepad. He does occasionally talk about his experience. He once said, unlike some people who'd had similar experiences, he didn't feel like he knew what he had to do once back home. He felt lost and spent much of his life searching for a path he knew he had to take. He got married, but it didn't work out. Nothing seemed to go right for him. He wrote, my life was really kind of going down the tubes. It was going into the toilet. He felt bad because he knew he'd been given another chance. It's a long story, but Lost Bill got found. One day, he met an Avon lady and she introduced him to God. He never really had been into God in the past, not even after his NDE, but now he started walking down what he called a spiritual path. He finally found his purpose. He became a counselor who treated Vietnam vets for PTSD. He then got a degree, a master's degree, and later a PhD in psychology. This is a man who'd done very badly in school before his NDE. He now talks about his experiences all over the place. He wrote, I'm appearing on television shows, radio talk shows, people are writing newspaper and magazine articles about me, I'm speaking at conferences and meetings. He still follows his spiritual path, but he says he doesn't care if people believe in spirits or gods or life after death. What matters, he says, is that he can help people understand that life is beautiful. He only really understood this after getting his face rearranged and briefly dying. He hopes his story will help others see some wonder in their existence without having to go through what he went through. Did Bill actually die or was his brain merely firing off some last shots from its neurotransmitters? We think we'll leave that conclusion up to you. Now you really need to watch 50 insane facts about death you didn't know. Or have a look at this classic, why it would suck to live through the end of the universe.